Hello everyone and welcome back to Solid State Physics in a Nutshell, brought to you by the Physics Department at the Colorado School of Mines. I'm Eric. And I'm Nicole. Last time we developed a set of vocabulary to describe crystals. So today our goal is to be able to visualize a variety of crystals in a more robust way without using software. Okay, so we're going to approach this problem by taking the crystal and slicing it into layers as a way of visualizing where the atoms are sitting and from that glean some information about material properties. And can we use this technique to visualize any crystal? Almost. As long as it has one axis perpendicular to the other two, typically the A3 axis. This technique isn't useful for triclinic systems because then these slices would be offset from each other. So once we identify our perpendicular axis, we'll want to label all the atom locations in terms of height in A3. And once we know that, we can construct two-dimensional cross-sections at each of those heights. Okay, let's start with a relatively simple example, cesium chloride. It has cesium atoms at all eight corners, with a chlorine atom in the body center. Since we have atoms at A3 equals zero, a half, and one in reduced units, we'll create three cross-sections, one for each A3 height. Since cesium chloride is cubic, each cross-section is going to be a square. And once we have those, let's decorate those with atoms as so. From this, it's fairly easy to see the chlorine atom is surrounded by eight cesium atoms, giving it a coordination number of eight. But even I can draw cesium chloride fairly well. The real utility of this technique arises from visualizing more complicated structures, like the perovskite structure shown here. While it looks really messy, we can see that our atoms only at A3 equals zero, one half and one, like in the cesium chloride example, which just gives us the same three cross sections that look like so. Separated out like this, we can try to think about the coordination number for the B atom in the body center. From the slices, we can see that there are six atoms within equal distance of the B atom. Yeah, I think I see them. There's one oxygen atom in the slice above, one below, and four in the same plane. Now, imagining I connect the oxygen atoms above and below to the ones in plane, I can see they form an octahedra, with the B atom sitting smack dab in the middle. You know, it's all well and good to visualize structure, but how does this tell me anything about properties? How we rationalize properties, at least qualitatively, often comes from the type of bonding in a crystal, rather than from first principles calculations. For example, an ion conductor might exhibit channels or layers for ions to move in. So we use the coordination number as a qualitative descriptor to relate the bonding in a crystal to its properties? Indeed. So before we leave, it would be good to go over a non-cubic example. Here we have the wurtzite structure, which is a hexagonal crystal. Like in the perovskite structure, here the coordination of the B atom is not quite clear. Let's see if slices can help us out. Since we know the crystal is identical under translation, Let's repeat our slices so we have a 2 by 2 section for each layer. Okay, now I see there's an oxygen atom right beneath this B, and three oxygen atoms above it in this triangle shape. Redrawing them over here, it's clear then that the B atom sits in the middle of a tetrahedra. So let's wrap this up with an example for you to try on your own. The first example brings us back to the perovskites. Some perovskites are tetragonal instead of cubic, with a long A3 axis and exhibit piezoelectricity. When piezoelectric, the A and B cations are displaced along the A3 axis by delta and delta prime. Once you draw this in slices and rationalize why the macroscopic crystal is a piezoelectric material. And for some extra awesome practice, what do you think would happen if we put a voltage across A1? That about does it for the slices technique. Next time we'll look at various crystal structures important in solid state. Thanks for watching Solid State Physics in a Nutshell. See you then.